welcome to the video. I'm John, and this is part two of my stop sign guitar build. Uh, it's been a couple months now since part one, uh, mainly because I've been putting together this uh, the new shop. Um, in the beginning, I thought it was going to take me three or four days, and it took me well over a month, and I'm still working on it. But it's really coming together, and it turned out much better than I thought it was going to. Um, I got to thank my dad for helping me out. Uh, he gave me some tools that he wasn't using anymore. Uh, they're going to come in really handy with my projects. Um, so with that said, I'd like to uh, get on with the video and talk about how I fabricated the, the mold that I, that I had to make so that I could make the back of the guitar a fiberglass. My idea to create this guitar goes back several years. My original concept has changed drastically as ideas came and went. And even now as I'm building the guitar, things are constantly changing. To make the back of the body out of fiberglass, first the mold had to be fabricated. Using plywood as my base, I glued down an 8 inch piece of masonite. This will be the form for the bottom of the guitar. All around the circumference, wedges are glued in place to create what will be a convex surface. This will hopefully add strength to the back of the body. Strips of cardboard glued to wooden blocks form the outer contour of the body. Plaster is shaped and sanded to create just the right radius where the sides and bottom meet. Latex paint is great to seal the cardboard and plaster as well as create a barrier between the mold and the fiberglass resin. To make an even more non-stick surface, a coat of car wax is brushed on the entire mold. Laying fiberglass can be a bit stressful and messy. Once you mix the resin with the hardener, you have 5 to 10 minutes working time. Preparing ahead as much as possible helps everything go smoothly. I pre-cut enough cloth to cover the entire mold with at least two layers of fiberglass. That should make the back strong enough, but not too heavy. I had to make special clamps to hold 15 wooden blocks that were set into the uncured fiberglass. After the fiberglass had cured, the clamps were removed. A new layer of fiberglass capsulates the blocks, making them permanently part of the body. The purpose of these blocks is so I can attach the top of the body to the bottom using small screws. After the body was fully cured, I used a router set up in a sliding jig to trim the blocks and level the rough edges. This was a lot easier to do while the body was still in the mold. At last it's time to see if all my hard work paid off. Soaking the mold with water will soften the cardboard and plaster, but will not hurt the fiberglass at all. After several minutes, the cardboard and wood easily breaks away, revealing the sides of the body. A few more minutes of soaking and gentle persuasion, the back of the guitar body pops right out of the mold. Everything looks great and I couldn't be happier with the results. Next I have to sand and fill any small imperfections before painting and fitting the steel top with the fiberglass bottom. So I'm really happy with how the guitar is turning out. I keep saying things are turning out better than I hoped, but I guess that just means that I'm really putting um, enough planning into everything that I'm doing. Um, even the fiberglass hasn't been that bad, but I make sure I'm wearing gloves and, and long sleeves and a dusk mask when I need to. Uh, so it makes a big difference. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, now that the shop's finished, uh, there'll be a lot more videos coming up. Uh, follow me on Facebook, uh, Johnny B Guitars. You can follow along in real time with all my projects. Um, the end of the video is uh, probably one of the most creative uh, takes on the 5150 guitar that I've ever seen. Um, it's Christopher Locke's uh, 5150 replica. Take care.